All right. I'm going to let you. Can I flip it? Oh, yeah, sorry. I got it. You should drop it. There we go. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome uh, <laughs> Welcome to an impromptu session here with CJTV. Uh, we're here at the Grace Lutheran Church in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, we're actually on our way downtown, and uh, we saw what's happening in front of us right now, which uh, goes to show and add to more of the Kenosha Strong mentality, some of the community that we've seen here so far, and the amazing rally of support that they have here. And uh, we're going to do our best to make sure we maintain people's, you know, we're not trying to put everyone on camera here that doesn't want to be on camera, but uh, I definitely want to talk to some of the folks here about what's happening here, uh, which is an every Tuesday event, guys, just so you know. Um, what they're doing is they have a uh, food drive here, and then it's a drive up. So usually they'll see, there's a lineup of cars that have been here when we first pulled up for folks that are able to just drive up and pick up groceries and essential needs um, such as pet food and some of the other stuff that people are looking to, uh, you know, that they might not be able to have access to on their own. So um, I want to make sure that in the comments here, if they're popping up, that people can hear me. I'm gonna swing this around this way. Let's do. Uh, well. Uh, yeah, hit that one. Nope. Nope. Where the comments? Well, I'm not sure where the comments are, but I want to make sure you guys can hear me. Maybe check on on your rig. Let's make sure that things are coming through. Uh, then we're gonna talk to folks. We just want to make sure we've got the proper audio. This is kind of that impromptu stream. How are we doing, boss? How are you? Good. Good. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. So we're gonna we're just doing a quick mic check here, guys. But uh, it's gonna take just a quick second whilst we get everything sorted out. And then we're gonna talk to some folks here. And. I got it. Here we go. And uh, we can you can hear me. You can hear me, everyone. <laughs> All right. They are. I right, good. All right. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Good deal. All right. So we had a chance to just breathe for uh, me. Breathe for a second. What was your name? Ariel Crowder. Right, and what are you doing here today? So I'm here registering people to vote and also giving them more voter information about the local elections and also the po presidential one that's going to be happening in November, just a couple weeks away. So, Have you had much of a turnout for the voter registration aspect of it? Yeah, so um, unfortunately a lot of the people here come from usually places like they don't really have a home or they're just couch surfing stuff like that so not everyone has the materials they need for me to be able to register them so I help them get more information on how to either get an ID know where to vote what times to vote like where they can vote in their district and all that kind of stuff uh, what information would they need in order to register so um, in Wisconsin there's a myvote.wi.gov that you can register to vote request an absentee ballot know your polling place and know all the hours that they will be able to vote in person um, I'm not sure about across the United States. I know it's a little bit different, but we have till tomorrow to register online. Otherwise, in Kenosha, you can go down to the municipal building. Um, they're open from 8.30 or 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and you can register any day up to the election and even on election day. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, are you out here every Tuesday? Is that? Yeah, I've been out um, doing voter registration since about June of this year, um, just at different events across the Mostly in Kenosha County. I've made it out to Lake Geneva once and then up to Milwaukee one time as well. So but I'm just trying to spread myself as much as I can and get all the information out that I can. That's awesome. Is, uh, what would you encourage people that are, that are watching or are viewing to, uh, about voting? Like, What would you have to say to anybody? I would say you need to do your research to know who you really want to vote for. And please use your voice because you should not be complaining about change not happening in our country and not being one to vote. Absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate that. And uh, I see that you have a shirt on here. Is this the organization you're with? Um, I'm actually doing it just with myself, by myself. Oh, wow. Okay. 
but this is just a shirt I got um, during a different event that happened. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, it's just a shirt I got at a different event that the Urban League of Racing in Kenosha hosted. They're a couple blocks that way. Um, but there's been a lot of organizations in Kenosha that have trying to been get out the vote outreach around town. So it's just something I've picked up along the way. <laughs> That's super awesome. That's super awesome. Um, are you, in your experience, have you seen younger voters coming out to register? Um, I would say a lot more older folks have been the ones that come up and talk to me, but a lot of younger folks don't exactly know what to do to vote. A lot of them are college students that aren't sure how to or where to start that process. So I feel like I've been a very good bridge to getting out the information that they need to know for first time voters. So it's just, I would say it's about more old than newer, but the newer people are still like getting their feet wet and understanding it better now. So. Sure. First time voters, what would you what would you tell someone that's doesn't really know what to do? They they want to vote, where do they do? What 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 what's the next step for them? I would say don't be afraid to ask questions and talk to as many people as you can about it because you're gonna get so many different opinions from so many people that like it's good to broaden your mind and hear all those different concepts so you can make a good judgment for yourself. Certainly. Are there any uh, sources that you would recommend? Um well, for Wisconsin specifically, um, myvote.wi.gov has a lot of information on there for that. And then also elections.wi.org, I believe, is another website that has um, mostly Wisconsin information. But it has so much information about if you're homeless, if you're a new voter, if you're a college student, veteran, all that kind of stuff. Are there any other places like this that you can think of uh, around uh, the Kenosha area right now that people can come to? register to vote or to gather more information about the uh, the process or the candidates? So um, there are a few more events. There's two happening this weekend um, over, well, it's in Kenosha, um, but it's with a different organization that I'm helping out with. It's AEF or AERF, it's African Emergency Relief Fund. Um, they're holding one at the, ooh, hold on, I don't know the exact name of the, Places. While you're looking that up, tell us a little bit, what, what is the African Emergency Relief Fund, the AERF? So they are an organization, they just got started here in Kenosha. Um, Tanya McLean is the main organizer, or one of the founders of it, and they are pretty much trying to help out the African com American community in Kenosha with certain, just like helping them find jobs, helping them stay healthy with this practical hygiene, and just like certain aspects of life that usually people don't think that people are in need of but like around Kenosha especially in uptown it's definitely needed just for those homeless people and people who are struggling in life right now so is this the link on here that, yeah that yeah that's the outside? my yeah okay, yeah so they want to know, so I'm just gonna take a this is my partner Don hey Don how are you I'm great thank you wonderful it's a, yeah, it's a great day. It's a beautiful day here in Kenosha. Yeah. And it's beautiful to see folks out here, you know, servicing this community in, in such an amazing way. Definitely. Um, so, yeah. Um, Saturday the 17th at Nueve Centro on its address 5917 on 39th Avenue. We'll be out there 12 to 4. And then Sunday, that same weekend, the 18th at Super, Mer Super Mercado. 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 Andrew Mercado. Okay, um, yeah. That grocery store over on 52nd Street will be there for to or 12 to 4 as well. Awesome, awesome. So you're going to be kind of spreading yourself out a little bit in the neighborhood. Definitely trying to. That's great. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot of great information. I appreciate it. No problem. Any Steph, anything from you? You think? Any questions? Do you have any comments that people have? Uh, any any questions people have that are popping up there about? They were just asking about the online voting thing. If we could pin it with our mods already. All right, cool. We got that pinned to the top, guys. So, yeah, if you're looking, if you're in the Wisconsin area and you're looking to figure out some more stuff about how to vote, where to vote, um, or information about just the voting process, comments are pinned to the top. Okay, here we go. Early voting um, in Kenosha County specifically. Um, it got moved to only the municipal building, which is our city hall over on 52nd Street. Um, but these are all the dates and then the times that correlate to those dates. And they're also doing drive through and curbside, so that's exciting as well. Yeah, let me see. Do I have anything else? Uh, mostly just Spanish resources. 
proof of ID and such if anybody has questions about that. But is it, that all anyone needs to come down to, to, uh, to register to vote? Is just proof of identification? Yeah. Um, if you are homeless, though, you're going to need a proof of residency that you can receive from a few different locations in Kenosha. Um, the kids, K... Ooh, I don't know the acronym, but it's a... Or the job center here in Kenosha. Those are two ways to... Um, get that. It's just a letter of proof of residency that they would need and then a photo ID as well. That's great. I was talking to someone and they said that they are uh, from the city council side. They're planning on moving uh, one of the, um, I, I want to say the community outreach buildings to Uptown from another location. I guess it's going to bring, and I'll get more information for you guys, but it looks like about 400 jobs to the Uptown area. That's which awesome. Sounds amazing, yeah. But uh, So it's great to see there's a lot of focus on the uh, on the rebuild and about helping people in uptown Definitely. and downtown. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate yeah, it. No and your name one more time. Ariel Crowder. Ariel Crowder. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ariel. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, let's go while well, there's no one down here. So guys, one of the things is we're, we're, we're trying to talk to folks that are out here doing uh, the services and uh, how's it going? Hi. How are you? Hi. All right. Hey, my name's CJ. Uh, we do a live stream. Hey, how are you? Hey, hey what's up? How are you? Wow, cool! <laughs> Finally, the man behind the mask. And the man, yeah, what's rarely a mask, guys. You know that. I get a lot of grief for not wearing one, but I've got one with me today. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So we saw what was happening out here. I, I was really curious, uh, and from what we've gathered, this is incredible. Every Tuesday. But. Uh, yeah. Every Tuesday we have um, a food drive and we get a ton of food from Festival. And what is it's, Festival? Oh, it's a local food um, market, like a grocery store. Okay. And they give great food, like um, fresh fruit, vegetables, meats, everything, and bread, milk. It's great. And uh, now with these bags, I, I see they're numbered. Do we just put together like a variety? Can we take a look at what's in one of these bags? Yeah. You know, you got produce. Yeah. And then... See like more than like two people a minute come through here, usually on average. How many people would you say you've seen like today? We started at 4:30 and we've seen about 52, 53. Wow. Melissa, at, right. four, at 4:45 we already had served 39 people in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Uh, when we pulled up, there's a car a line of cars and people all around the block. It's amazing. So, so some of the things you're seeing here are going to be some some essentials, bread. Uh, there's some vegetables in here, um, basic needs here, uh, you know, some uh, bisquick, uh, you know, peanut butter, jelly, uh, you know, the fundamentals that people need to make sure they've got. We saw that. Yeah, we saw that you had uh, some animal food services as well. Yes. That's fantastic. Now, how long has this been going on? Um, this has gone, been going on since, um, for a long time. The director, she would know the exact date. I don't want to give you June a... June 4th, 2019. June 4th, 2019. 4th, there you go. This is Just, a pastor. Yeah. You would know. Got it. That's amazing. That's amazing. Can we talk to you? For, yeah. We've been doing the outside part since March. Okay. So. Uh, just since COVID, obviously. Yes. Right. Yes. So tell me a little bit more about, uh, so Grace Lutheran Church here. This is Grace Lutheran Church. And you are a, you're a pastor here, correct? I'm not the pastor here. The no. pastor is the gentleman in the... The, um, in the green jacket greenish there? Greenish jacket, yeah. Okay. Okay. Jonathan Barker. So what, what is it that you do here, sir? Uh, well, I'm a pastor here in Kenosha. I'm just more or less a worker bee. <laughs> Aren't we all? We, we carry up boxes. I mean, you know, this is a week-long process. Wow. Tomorrow, the, tonight, everything is filled and carried out, and then during the week... The director, Denise Russell, and her crew will fill boxes and bags and set it on, set them on chairs. And then, so on Tuesday, we can bring it upstairs. Wow. Can we take a look at the inner, inner, inner workings here? It looks like you have a ton of people in, in, at work here that are, that are making this all happen. Come on in. Thank you. So, guys, this is actually where we were uh, – last time we were here, boss, was uh, Joe Biden was here. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were uh, – That would be upstairs. That would be upstairs, okay. Uh, this lady right here in the purple, she's one of the main cogs. 
she does a lot. Hello. These folks are interviewing people about the food pantry. Yeah, hi, my name's CJ. I do a little live stream called CJ TV. And so, uh, Darlene can tell you anything you want to know. No, you're going to want to talk to Denise. Denise, we heard yeah. the name. We heard the name. But I don't we just want to see like the inner workings here. It looks like a bunch of refrigerators. I know that you guys are doing... Denise, how are you? Hi, good. How are you Pleasure doing? to meet you. My name's CJ. Hi, CJ. It's my friend, Stefflin. Hi. Uh, yeah, we just we were driving by. We saw what was happening, and uh, it looked amazing. There was a lineup of cars yes, isn't around the block. There was a lineup of people around the block. Yep. Uh, and uh, we, every Tuesday, you're out here. Yeah, every Tuesday from 4.30 to 6.30. We will be cutting back a half an hour when yeah, the, it starts to get darker. Sure. But, yeah, every Tuesday. And then we also have showers on Wednesday. And then we have on Thursdays and Fridays a breakfast program. It's to go, but every day the meals are different, and they're really? good meals. They're good meals too. And now we heard that uh, a lot of this food is donated by festival, correct? Yes, we have a portion festival foods. We purchase some from uh, Feeding America. We also have many partners of churches and other organizations that donate food. So it's just a combination of everybody. And now with those purchases, are those coming from donated funds as well? Is it all involved with the community? Oh, yes, yes. Um, on our website, you can make a, a monetary donation. Well, what is that website? It's gracewelcomecenter.org. Gracewelcomecenter.org. So if you're looking to make a donation to everything you're hearing here, not just about the Tuesday uh, pantry service, but also the, the showers and to the breakfast service as well, uh, there it is. Can I break down really quick what the showers Please are? Do, okay. yes. So the showers... Um, they, when they get here, and it's mostly for homeless people or people that um, they just don't have running water in their apartment. So they get a new T-shirt, new underwear, new socks, and they get all the deodorant and shaving, whatever they need. You know, all right. the, yeah. And then um, we send them away with a little pack lunch, too. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, and that's every Wednesday from 9 to 12. We we were here for um, when Joe Biden was here. Yes. And, and I talked to a bunch of people uh, that, that were out here. Not just about that, but, but about a lot of the things happening right here in the community. Um, they, they referenced me to a, down on the corner here. Uh, there's a gentleman that has quite a set. There are strollers down there. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's where he more or less resides. Okay. Um, and, and in talking to folks, they'd mentioned that the, the, homeless, um, the, the homeless population here is, is one that is it, it's, it's a, it's a factor that is pretty palpable. That, that, it is. Has that always been a situation here in Kenosha? Or is as long as I've been coming here, I've been volunteering here for three and a half years. Right. Um, it's been that way. Originally, we just started out one day a week doing breakfast on a Friday and lunch. Mm. And then slowly we just kept expanding. But they've always been here. Um, my personal opinion, I think a lot of it is mental illness. Right. You know. Do you see, uh, in your personal opinion, uh, uh, programs in place to help aid that, like the real – like the the problem, not so much well, just. Well, you know, like with our healthcare system, it's not the best. Okay. So, okay. yeah. But yeah. this is fantastic, though, and I know that yeah. things like uh, like hygiene, yeah, showers, those are things that'll help uh, confidence yeah. moving towards getting jobs. Yes. Yes. So, so what Stefflin just said is that this is the only church. Grace Lutheran is the only church that offers shower facilities. Yeah. Uh, for individuals. Yes, so also we have many churches that donate items for our showers. And those are other, are they all within the same denomination or are they just a collection of all different churches? I would say 90% is Lutheran. Okay. We are trying to reach out. We have Baptist, we have Catholic. Uh, all is welcome. Um, myself, I'm a humanist. So everybody here is, everyone here, it, it doesn't matter. You know, we're all aiming for the same goal. It's just to help people so and to uplift them. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Do you find, I, do, I mean, I'm sure you see plenty of success stories that come out of mm -hmm. these assistants. Do, can you think of one or two off the top of your head? Oh, that my goodness. Okay, well, this is like a year and a half ago. Uh, we had a couple, they're a married couple, that they came up here from down south. And by the time they, they were coming up to visit a friend, by the time, and the friend was going to give them jobs. By the time they got there, here, their friend had a massive heart attack. They had no place to go. And um, they ended up sleeping out on the grounds. And um, eventually they got into the Shalom Center, which is great, but they kept coming here for breakfast and for other things. And eventually they got jobs, and then they got their own apartment. 
And then they would bring us back a package of socks or something, you know, I mean, just to give back. They would come yeah. back in to let us know that they're doing good. Yes. And then they're, you know, buy us something to donate. So, yeah, we have many success stories. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Somebody was asking if you could tell us a little bit about Cush. I actually am a part of that. So, uh, but they yeah, wanted to know about, about Cush. Cush. You, I, yes. Yeah. So this gentleman, um, Pastor Jim, could tell yeah. you about Cush. Yeah. Okay. Pa Pastor Jim. Yes. No, we're not done with you yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so tell, what, what is CUSH? CUSH is a group of churches. It stands for Congregations United to Serve Humanity, and it's basically a social justice advocacy group, and they work on different areas that they think would benefit the community. We have a um, affordable housing task force, an immigration task force, transportation task force, and I know there's one or two others that escape me, and it is made up of many different churches. The, the uh, pastor at Bradford, the Unitarian Universalist Church, yeah, is headed shout out Bradford Church. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, is uh, head of the Religious Leaders Caucus. Um, pa uh, Rabbi Dina Feingold from Beth Hillel Temple is very involved in it. So it's there are a number of different wow. faith traditions represented. And it, it uh, we basically were an advocacy group, okay. so which sometimes surprises people. They think we ought to be doing things hands on, and we do sometimes, but it's mostly advocating for laws, regulations, changes within the system. When you when you say that people feel like you should be doing things more hands on, is it that they don't see the validity between being an advocate, or is it that they feel there's more that can be done? I think it's a combination. Okay. I, uh, I think part of it is that they don't see the validity in advocacy, that they think that everything should be transactional, that you, that you, that you like here at the food pantry, right. instead of planning, you should be carrying boxes. That would be a good example. But, I mean, I, I can imagine that just going into this, there's so much on the back end that you said that it goes like the entire week, you're yeah. stockpiling and you're setting like bags up. Yeah. and getting things ready. Making menus. This week we have chili in the boxes, and then we also have a chicken and a side dish and two cans of vegetables, and we also have three cans of soup and crackers, cereal, something salty, something sweet, and juice. So we're hoping that by giving them meals and food with a purpose that they can use it right. and it won't be wasted. Yeah. And you, you said something outside. You said, uh, I'm just a worker bee, and, and, which is appropriate in the yellow, i got to yeah. say. Yeah. But uh, but I gotta say that I mean I know just going into this what this this camera right here there's so much on the back end that happens there and that's just one guy I mean with what you're doing it's such an amazing effort for the community I can imagine that this is an all week thing just this alone you must have so many different people involved well, so not me her Denise is the director of the food pantry and she's the one that organizes it sets it all up yeah. and we we, we have. Tons of volunteers. We have volunteers that will come in on a Monday, all day Monday, all day Tuesday. Um, we call it AM and PM shifts, mm -hmm. and they're here just to put everything together. And then, then we, of course, we have showers on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. We have breakfast, but during that time, we're still sorting food and getting things organized for the following week. It takes hundreds of hours to do this, hundreds. And our volunteers are so dedicated, and we always are looking for new volunteers, always. We're always willing to open up the doors and have more people come in. We are actually, I feel like we're a family. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we spend so much time together, and we get to know each other, and um, it becomes very personal um, when you're working hard together. Well, you're bonded over a labor of love, sure. and I think that that's a beautiful sentiment. No matter what you're doing, you're, you're doing it out of, out of goodness and kindness, yeah. and, and you're building something that's benefiting so many lives exactly. you know yes and uh, you can't help but become close with everybody so. i saw and now you've incorporated uh voter registration out front as well and, and we have Pamela dental out there is that the next we didn't get a chance to talk yeah, to the well, next first table. table is um the census okay the second table is voter registration the third uh, table is familiar dental mm -hmm. um and we welcome anybody that wants to come mm -hmm. to help the community yeah. okay yeah. Which is amazing. No, I just wanted to make sure. Well, my, he, we're, he's looking up a little information for yeah. us at the same time here, yeah. which is amazing. Now, um, 
it looks like you have like some uh, younger volunteers as well. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a lot of youth that come out and, and help in the, in the process out here? We need more. We need more. We need more. The problem is schools back in session. If we can get some 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds to come after school, that would be fantastic. Because like today, today's a late day, and we could really use the help. So you guys heard that. If you're at home, you're doing homeschool, or if you're not, and you're looking for a way to give back to the community, I'm talking to a lot of parents out there. If you want to get the kids out of the house for a little bit, send them on down here to Grace Lutheran and get them involved in this cause, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, and what, what kind of things could they do to help out? Well, for, for the younger kids, so 17, I don't want anyone less than 17 because yeah. we have to watch them too much and sure, we're just too busy. But 17-year-olds, 18 and 19, they would be lifting, carrying things out. They would be runners. Okay. Because you, you've seen everyone coming from here, going out there. Yeah. It's exhausting. And to be clear, guys, these bags are not just – they're no little bags. They're, no. they're double-bagged and sometimes triple-bagged in boxes. They're, they're sending out, like, full-on grocery shopping – status like a cart full of food yeah. to these homes we saw someone out here was unfortunate but uh, they got it figured out but the bags they one of their bags ripped out but it was because they they had yeah. so much that they were carrying sure. and if you notice the walkers have bags they prefer right. bags over boxes because it's easier to carry and a lot of times they'll repack it and they'll go through and take out what they don't want mm -hmm. or they're, what they're not going to use and they'll pack their carts or their backpacks. Now, cars, we pack boxes because that's right. easier to carry for everybody. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, for walkers, we, we yeah. do bags. How many? I know you keep tallies. Uh, we, we were talking about that earlier. 61 at 5 o'clock. Okay. 61 people already at 5 o'clock. That's just walking. That's just because we saw a lineup of cars that went around the block yes, when we pulled walking. up. 61 people since 4.30 to 5 o'clock. 30 minutes. Yep. People can do the quick math on that, how many a minute that is. Yeah, but that's, that's just walking. That's, that's, walking, just walk that's just walking family. I can tell. I'm looking at you, and I can tell how happy and excited am, you are I about am. this. It, it, I mean, we do this week after week after week, and it never gets boring. Uh, it's exhausting, but it's, it's so fulfilling. It is. What an, what an amazing way to give back. And I know that there's a lot of people that I meet and, and explain my travels, and they want to know how they can be more involved. And, and I love that you don't have to go far. No. You know, you don't have to go far at all. Right in your community. There's always some place that needs your help. Even if you can't lift, like we're asking for younger kids, but even if you can't do that, we still, I bought um, two pallets of crackers from um, Feeding America, right? Well, they're um, the two little crackers in a package. Sure. So we had volunteers package enough for a sleeve of crackers. Yeah. Yeah, so two pallets, we had volunteers do that. We need volunteers. You're talking like yes. Pallets. Pallets, <laughs> pallets of food. And then also, like one, one time I ordered um, instant potatoes. They were little packets. So I had a volunteer, it was a whole pallet, do eight packets in a bag. You know, this takes hours. So anything, if you can't stand for a long period of time, then we can have you sit down and, and package something up. Right. Or if you like to deal with, work with vegetables, we always have vegetables that need to be gone through and packaged up. So, yeah. And we saw you have meat and uh, so there's produce, meat. You have, it's not just, you know, pantry items. It's Yes, it's, we have perishable items too. And um, we receive our meats from TFAB and from Feed in America. What is, what is TFAB? TFAB is a com commodities that, that you go through. Um, it's an organization that we belong to. Okay. So, and they're wonderful. And Feed in America is wonderful. So. That's amazing. I mean, I, I'm sure I could, I could pick your brain all day. I just think it's incredible that uh, on Tuesdays, guys, we're going to make sure I, I let everyone know again on Tuesdays, from 4.30 to 6, you can come down here. It's the, the pantry drive, or what do you refer to it as? It's just a food pantry. Food pantry. Yep. Um, and you can get, uh, it looks like people, are, you've cleaned out everything, yeah, we'll, it seems like. We'll, we'll keep it going. You're going to keep it going. Yeah, we're starting back up again, over, over back. Around here. the corner? Yep, around the corner. Well, let's take a walk over there and, and, and continue. How's the reception under here? What do you think? So, <laughs> so we start off with 125 boxes and bags, and then we add to it. So we never have too much. Last 125. Week, yeah, last week we shipped out 164 families we did. Wow. So what we'll do is we ran, went through all of our stuff, so we're going to do up 20 more boxes. Okay. Okay? Once those 20 go out, we're going to do up another 20. Okay. That way we don't have an abundancy of overage. Sure. You never know who's going to show up. Some days we could only have 140. Yeah. yeah, and then last week we had 164. So do you try to get the uh, perishables out first? 
No, they're divided up among the boxes. Okay, so it's still even because you I've seen you have several refrigerators and yeah. freezers and yeah. ice chests that are yeah, that are equipped to so, handle that. And then we have like miscellaneous items like eggplant and squash and that kind of stuff on a free table because that's stuff that we can't pass out to everybody. Not everyone likes that. So usually the walkers and some of the drivers will pull over and they'll go through those tables sure. and grab what they want because this this way we know they're going to use them. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's take a look at these uh, these boxes real quick. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this is where the sound's coming out of here, so we're all good. So, uh, and now I also saw dog or animal food yeah. as a donation out front. Yes, we do. Yeah, we have dog food, cat food, and um, as long as it lasts. So we're very lucky, very lucky, all the donations we receive. And where does that come from? Um, kitty, um, <laughs> kitty, our kindred kitty, kitty, yeah. So kindred kitty, and is that a local pet food store? Yeah, it's a local shelter. So let's take a look at some of these boxes real fast here. So we're just we're just starting to pack these, right? Yeah. So you got cereal. There's soups. Yep. And chili because we're gonna put chili. Chili's the. To make chili. Yeah, you were saying that's yep. the hit for the week. For here. The, yeah, chili and um, a second meat with a vegetable and a side dish. So you're gonna put some. There's gonna be some meat yeah, in here as well. So ground beef to go with the chili and chili beans and kidney beans. And, and how, how many stuff. people? So enough to feed like what 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 kind of fam, like a family of what size do you think is a box uh, gonna go? For? Maybe four. Um, we the stuff that went out this morning was more like five. Yeah. Yeah. But this we're just okay. So so besides the chili, now we're also putting in two, yeah, tuna helper. Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. They're now. Okay, so we need. Are these the crackers here? Yeah. Yeah, so they'll have these wiped out in, in minutes. Everybody's got a job, and they're all going to do Well, their you job. guys got, uh, we don't want to get in the way. You yeah. have a lot going on, and everyone's moving real fast. Yeah. So, we have to get this stuff out the door. well, we're going to get out of your way. Uh, so, if you want to walk with us on our way out here, that'd be great. Hey, you guys, thanks so much for everything you're doing. Thank you. You're incredible. Thank you. You're very welcome. Take care. So amazing. I got to tell you, I'm, 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 and, and everyone, everyone in my feed knows this, but I'm full on in love with everything Kenosha as far as like the community here you got to stay a little kind of close otherwise the mic will get squelchy uh it's just been incredible I mean everything about Kenosha here has been just a rally around all the needs of the community yes. and, and I, I can't yes. even begin to describe how amazing it is to see yeah. so many people come together for so many different causes but under a banner of like you said humanitarian effort correct correct yes which is yeah, fantastic how so much has slowed down yeah, and this is this is a wonderful part. Now, from now until six o'clock, we'll have guests, but it'll just trickle in. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, you went through it really and, fast. Yes, yeah, so and this is the part where we breathe and we relax for a little while. Good. Yeah. Good. Real for two seconds. Diaper ministry is. That's through the church. Now, okay. see, we're a Grace Welcome Center. Okay. But, and then the church is um, the diaper ministry is through the church, and they're downstairs on Thursdays. They're open from two okay. to five. What do they do? And they pass out diapers and wipes. Oh, great. Yep. That's yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate everything thank you're doing. You. It's amazing. All right, and God bless. Thank you. All right. All right. Hey, hey. What's up? Let me let me do a wrap real quick. I'm going to say hi to you. Don't go anywhere. Okay. You're good. Thank you so much for letting us talk with you today. I appreciate oh, thank it. You. Yeah, thank you. You're very you. welcome. These very people welcome. have been waiting a long time to see you with their three kids. Oh, we'll definitely go see them here. Waiting. We're yeah. on our way over there. All right. Thank you. You had one more thing for me. I did. Okay, so that organization, organization, well, foundation I told you about, the um, AERF Foundation, they're hosting a walk. It's called The Walk on the 20th of October, so just next week. It's going to start at 1 a.m. Um, marching from Kenosha all the way to Milwaukee. Um, there's a Facebook event. Um, about it so there's more information on there but yeah they're gonna have like a whole group of people and then a caravan driving from Kenosha on um, Green Bay Road I believe Highway 31 all the way up to Milwaukee really yeah that's it's also the first day of it starts at 1 a.m. or 1 p.m. 1 a.m. on the 20th 1 a.m. on the 20th and then we're gonna get there by 6 p.m. that same day to um kind of get started and get more attention on early voting in Kenosha because that's the first day you can early vote here. So. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. And I encourage everyone, if you want to come out in March, I'm, I'm, I am I'm got to check travel plans, but I'm pretty close to being able to commit to going on this March because I need to get my steps up. 
That's what needs to happen, and I love the cause. That's yeah. great. I really appreciate you taking the time and yeah, talking no to us. Problem. Thank you. I just wanted to get that out before you left. <laughs> well, thank you. No, I was hoping that we could get some more information from you. And actually, once we cut, I definitely want to grab some more info and uh, just some of the stuff that you have going on this weekend as well. Definitely. So, great. That's amazing. Well, thank yeah, you so much. No problem. Thanks you're great. For being out here. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. So, uh, on the sign right here, if you just want to take a look. So, again, guys, uh, they have their normal worship pantry Tuesdays, 4 30 to 6 30. They do their supper Wednesdays, 5 to 6. You can see it there. That breakfast, they do Thursdays and Fridays from 8 to 9.30. They say it's a different menu every time they do it. So you have a chance. You have a chance to do. Hey, hey, one sec, darling. And uh, and then you have the diaper ministry where they do wipes and diapers. You can come in on Thursdays uh, from 2 to 5. So uh, fantastic stuff out here, you guys. I'm so in love with, uh, with seeing this out here. Uh, voter registration uh, and just so many other efforts that they've got out here to help give back to the community. Uh, so that's all. I'm glad I got a chance to swing by and see this today. Uh, if you guys got youngsters, 17 to 19, you want to get them out here, do some volunteer work, Grace Lutheran Church, uh, the Grace Welcome Center. Uh, you guys, they got a lot of great stuff happening right here in Kenosha. Um, and again, uh, big shout out to everyone here for all the efforts they put in to heal and to mend, uh, and to continue to build this Kenosha strong life that they've got going here. You guys, it's, it's really incredible to be out here and see if you haven't been out to Kenosha you need to make a trip. So much love y'all have a good day.